guys, just wait till you guys see this. A foremost example of the most exciting endeavor known to mankind. My stamp collection. <sighs> wow, that is exciting. <laughs> you better believe it. And today, I'm treating the class to an audiovisual presentation on this very subject. Should be even more exciting than that kid who gave a presentation on coin collecting. Who was that again? That was also me. Well, I'm proud to be a philatelist. That's what you call stamp collectors. Really? I always thought it was nerd. Um, it's a little known fact, but philately is a Greek term that means literally the love of tax-free things. Larry! Hey, guys, this is my friend Larry. Hi, Larry. Hi there, kids. There have been many famous philatelists in history. King Farouk of Egypt, Tsar Nicholas III of Russia, King Carol of Romania, to name just a few. Larry's a letter carrier and a fellow philatelist. Really? really? Indeed, yes. In fact, my whole family's been involved in the Postal Service all the way back to 1918. Well, enough chit-chat. Marcus, what have you got to show me this week? Pay attention! This is the most dramatic part of the hobby of stamp collecting. Trading and bartering! <sighs> got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it! Looks like I've got everything, Marcus. I don't think I can bear the tension. A bit you don't have this! Ah! <laughs> Oh. The History of Stamps. On May 6th, 1840, the first stamps in history went on sale. They were what we call the one penny black and the two pence blue, each carrying a likeness of Queen Victoria. This kid calls himself a philatelist? Why, he's a complete amateur! Whereas you, Phantom, are an incomplete amateur. Uh, I mean, this kid isn't close to being as amateurish as you. You're completely incomplete in comparison. Uh, I mean... Silence! In 1843, Brazil was the second country to issue stamps. In the same year, Zurich and Geneva issued their own stamps. Got it! Got it! Got it! Got it? You've got everything, Phantom, as far as stamps go. Why, your stamp collection is... Ah! Smoking! The Pony Express. This 10-day, 2,000-mile route was one of the most exciting, albeit brief, developments in the history of postal delivery. Are there any questions so far? Why don't they make stamps with different flavored glue? You know, like maybe uh, beef jerky. Ah! <laughs> Now, now, class, someone must have a more relevant question. Billy? Oh, uh, well, are any of those stamps you collect worth any money? Oh, yes. S some stamps are very valuable. When you say very valuable, exactly how much are we talking about in plain old dollars and cents? In some cases, extremely valuable. How much? How much? Well, I'll give you an example. Hey, you have that slide in upside down. Nope. This is the Curtis Jenny Inverted. It's a 24 cent airmail stamp from 1918 that had the likeness of the Curtis Jenny biplane printed upside down. Only a single sheet of the inverted stamps has ever been found. No bet you've got that one, huh, Phantom? No! The Curtis Jenny Inverted is the one stamp that's eluded me all these years. But I'll get it one day. I'm obsessed with it, Radicus. Obsessed, I tell you. Really? Yes, for not only am I a stamp enthusiast, I am also an enthusiast of vintage aircraft. The Curtis Jenny being my all-time favorite. Why, I think I would have made a fine pilot, too, if it hadn't have been for my... my... I know, your dreadful fear of flying. Yes, well, we need say no more on that subject. And your fear of heights. Why, you're deathly afraid of tall buildings, stairs and step ladders, orange crates, elevator shoes. Enough! It's the stamp we're talking about. And I'll have it one day. One day, I tell you! All right, all right. You haven't answered my question. How much exactly would that stamp be worth? Uh, I don't know exactly, but in the neighborhood of a million dollars. Oh. A million bucks? And as a matter of fact, I happen to have a Curtis Jenny inverted on a postcard right here. Yeah! 
That's why Larry the letter carrier fainted this morning. <laughs> he couldn't take the excitement. Phantom, you fainted. This is wonderful, Marcus. I found it in an old encyclopedia. It was addressed to the school's old librarian, Miss Dimsmithy, in 1918. Principal Mulligan said that since she had no remaining family, I could keep the postcard and the stamp. I must have that stamp. I must have that stamp. So, Marcus, you're telling us that little stamp is worth a million dollars? I suppose so, but I have no intention of selling it. Uh, could I have a look at it? Let me see it, Marcus. I'm your buddy. I should see it first. I'm your sister. Legally, I must own a part of that stamp. Give it to me! I, I want to see it! Give it to me! 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 Everyone, calm down! Here. But Phantom, do I have to wear the mask? You know I'm latex intolerant. Never mind. Whoa! <laughs> Ah. You will pose as Larry the Letter Carrier, and you will bring me back that stamp! I tell you, Phantom, it itches something awful! I must have that stamp! No! Ow! <laughs> what if it gives me a rash? Marcus, if you're worried about Earl trying to steal the stamp, maybe you should let someone who's extraordinarily daring, agile, and athletic guard it for you. Someone like... Me, perhaps. I think you need someone with cunning and real smarts. Someone you can trust. Someone like, well, me! Marcus, I'm not going to try to make you do anything you don't want to. But I'm your older sister, and I order you to give me that stamp! Uh, thanks, but I think I'll just hang on to it myself. Don't be so selfish, Marcus. If I had a million dollars, I'd do something to help people. I'd buy the biggest rats in the world and a different horse for every day of the year. How would that help people? Well, on a big ranch and with all those horses, I'd have to hire a lot of people to help. I'd buy the biggest water slide in the world and make thousands of paying customers wet and happy. I'd buy a Broadway theater and call it Rubies and put on solo performances every day, selflessly sharing my talents with the world. And I'd charge only slightly higher than the going ticket rate. Ah! Ah! Why don't you watch where you're going, kid? I mean, my good friend. Hi, Larry. Are you okay? Yeah. Uh, why wouldn't I be? Well, because you fainted this morning. Uh, and your voice sounds kind of funny. Well, your voice hasn't even changed yet. Did Nurse Cutlip check you out? Nurse Butkus says I'm just fine. Look, kid, you gotta give me that stamp. The Critical Jiminy Converted. Do you mean the Curtis Jenny inverted? What? Is there an echo in here? Look, the mayor of the post office just informed me that that old librarian lady does have family after all, and they want the postcard back. With the stamp. Mayor of the post office? Are you sure? Give it to me. I, I can't believe he just took it. Larry, what, what's going on? Oh, these fainting spells have run in my family for generations. Nez Cutlip says I ought to avoid excitement. But I think I'm feeling up to another look at that amazing stamp of yours. But I just gave it to you. But it couldn't have been you, but it looked just... Did I faint again? Handsome devil. It was him! He stole it! Yikes! We'll get him, Marcus. You go this way and I'll go that way. Uh, police surveys show that you have a better chance of finding someone when you split. I'll be on my way then. You guys gotta help me. My stamp's been stolen. What? what? It was somebody disguised to look just like Larry the Letter Carrier. Earl has got to be behind this. Don't worry. We'll find him. 
and we won't expect anything in return. Except for a handsome reward. Naturally. Naturally. Come on! supposed to mean? Well, uh-oh uh is an exclamation one uses when one fears that one has done something accidentally for which one might be held responsible. Is cold it even? Or... Where is my stamp? I might have dropped it in the vent. Which vent? Um, the wrong vent? The incinerator vent? That vent. You incinerated my stamp? It's possible. We caught the culprit, Marcus. But he hasn't told us where the stamp is yet. He hasn't said anything yet. Yeah, he kind of just fainted. Oh, that's the real Larry. Oh, I thought his mask was on a little tight. I nearly caught the thief, but all I got was this. Now Earl's got my stamp and I'll never see it again. A million dollars. There goes my water slide. My ranch, my horses, my shrine to my own talents. Oh, my head. Ah! Ah! Oh. <laughs> you incinerated my stamp. You incinerated my stamp. It was a flawed stamp after all. <laughs> used to say, life is like a box of beef jerky. You never know what you're gonna get. Except for the occasional bout of gastrointestinal disorder. Now, now, Phantom, there's no sense crying over burnt stamps. You're just gonna have to accept what's happened. I mean, it's not like you can turn back the hands of time and go back to 1918 and just grab another stamp. <laughs> Brilliant, Raticus. Brilliant! I knew that. I'm going to morph the school back in time to the stamp factory where the original Curtis Jenny inverted was made. And this time, you will bring me back my stamp. <laughs> no! The entire sheet of stamps! <laughs> well, okay. As long as it doesn't involve latex. Larry. Larry, are you okay? Uh, Marcus, where am I? What's happening? I don't know! Earl, he's up to something again. But what? I know. I'm having a very vivid dream. This often happens after my fainting spells. Oh, this is a good one. This is the old bureau of engraving and printing where they made all the stamps. Judging from this portrait of 28th President Woodrow Wilson, it must be about 1918. Oh, no! Earl's planning to steal the original Curtis Jenny Inverted. You mean the stamp is here? The entire sheet should be here. Anybody could take it. Meaning Earl, of course. Of course. 
You've outdone yourself with this morph. Just go inside and find me my stamp. All my stamps. Okay, okay. I think we should split up. That way we have a much better chance of finding the Curtis Jenny inverted. The entire sheet. Right. And then whoever finds it can keep it, you know, for safekeeping. Of course. Of course. Uh, I know this sounds awful, Larry, but... I'm not sure I can trust my friends. Don't worry, Marcus. Remember, this is all a dream. A vivid, philatelic dream. I've dreamed of having dreams like this. Yeah! It's my great Uncle Lawrence. Uh, are you okay, Larry? You're, you're not gonna faint, are you? Normally I would, but I believe that since this is a dream and that I am already unconscious, it's not technically possible for me to faint. I've got to introduce myself. <laughs> Yes! You're my great Uncle Lawrence! You're... You're me! <laughs> we do share a certain family resemblance, don't we? No, I'm your great nephew from the future. I won't be born for another 50 years or so. But don't be alarmed. This is all just a dream! Marcus? Me too. Yeah, I guess we just cost you a million dollars. It's not the money! Don't you guys get it? The Curtis Jenny Inverteds were little pieces of history. All over the world, stamp collectors will be deprived of the joy of, of ever even knowing they existed. You're my, you're my, uh, oopsie daisy. Here we go again. <laughs> Larry, you did it. My stamps. Wow. You ruined my stamps. But you got the plane, Bob, the plane. That's true. I have an actual Curtis Jenny biplane. <laughs> I'm awful sorry about you losing your stamp, Marcus. Would you like to hear about this fascinating philatelic dream I had? Thanks, Larry. Maybe another time. There'll be other stamps, Marcus. Yeah, the world's full of stamps. Isn't it? I hope you don't give up stamp collecting because of us. Because we were so... Greedy. greedy. Marcus would never quit because he knows the best thing about stamp collecting is... You never know what you're gonna find. Hey, look what I found! A penny! <gasps> you're right! Y you never know what you're gonna find, or where! <sighs> Larry, 
Larry! <laughs> Smells kind of like beef jerky. Ew! Gross! 